Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another Wild Rift video. And in today's video, I'm gonna be doing a tier list for every single role in the game. You can skip around in the video if you want, you know? So I have a quick little announcement. I added a donation link. Now I've seen a lot of people in the comments mention like, you know, you should add a donation link and this and that. So I really wanna tell you that there is a donation link, but I'm not in desperate need of money, okay? Like my camera crashes and you know, things like that. But please don't think that I need a lot of money. Like only donate to me if you want to. I'll, I'll, I just put it out there so you can send a message in addition to your donation, you know, just in case. So now we're gonna get into the video. By the way, Another thing, sorry that the intro is taking very long. I've seen some people ask me to play Singed. Now, I wanna see it. if there is enough interest for it, I'll play Singed. If this video reaches 1000 likes, this is just dedicated for Singed. If this video reaches 1000 likes in the first day, I'll buy Singed, I'll learn Singed, and I'll upload a Singed video in like one or two weeks, depending on how long it takes to learn, okay? And also, I'm doing a skin giveaway. All you gotta do is put down a comment on, uh, under this video. What a beautiful video. One minute intro. What a stupid YouTuber I am. But let's, let's get into this video. <laughs> so we're going to be starting with the mid lane. And as you can see, there is a special tier dedicated for Katarina, which is the S++ tier. And guys, Katarina is absolutely beyond a doubt broken. But the problem is you got a one trick Katarina. Now Katarina is not easy, but the thing is if you one trick Katarina, she will absolutely demolish everyone. She can 1v5, like she's just crazy, okay? Now as you can see, we have the new champion Galio on S plus as well. Well, not S plus plus, but S plus. Galio is amazing, guys. And the reason why Galio is an S plus, like I think Galio is actually S. But I still put him in S+. Plus. Let me tell you why. Because Galio is really good into Katarina and Akali. And both of these champions are really, really good in the meta, but especially Katarina. Like, Galio should do fine against Katarina. Like, Katarina destroys everyone else, but Galio can actually do fine. Now, Corky is a really, really good champion as well in the mid lane, and especially in this meta, because he's a, t he's a tank shredder. His third ability is very nice against tanks, and he like he's just very, very strong mid lane. He can rotate really well. His package is really, really nice for when the dragon spawns, and he's just an all-around good pick. I'm talking very briefly through them, so I can make this video as, uh, as short as possible and still talk about a lot of champions. So that's why I'm not talking a lot about the champions. Zix is S+. Plus. You know, Z people understood how Zix works now, and he is S+. Plus. Now, Zix can, like, in the early game, Zix is fine against Katarina, because you can just keep bashing on her, like, keep damaging her. But if Katarina just kills you once, she can snowball you. So, like, Z the reason that Zix is in S+, plus is first of all, because he's Zix. He can get turrets super fast, a lot of poking, very, very big team uh, damage in team fights, and he's okay against Katarina. Now, at the bottom of the S tier, uh, S plus tier, we have Oriana. She's still, even after the nerf, well, actually, no, 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 no. She is not really S plus tier. I would put her at the top of the S tier. Almost S plus, but not yet, because, like, Galio, Corky, and Zix are just better than Oriana now after the nerf. She got hit pretty hard. Now, I see a lot of people put Akali in the S plus tier or th something like that. I disagree. I think Akali is S tier. First of all, Katarina is the better assassin. Of course, Katarina being better doesn't make Akali worse. But the thing is though, well actually it does. Like Akali against Katarina, Katarina is gonna do more than the Akali. So the release of Katarina kinda indirectly nerfed Akali. But also the tank meta, for some reason, Katarina is able to shred through the tank meta anyways, because it's Katarina, she's just broken. But obviously, Akali got hit by the tank meta. Like, the reason that tanks are better now, you know, it makes Akali a little worse, because she's really good into squishies. Now, we have Twisted Faith in the S tier as well. <clears throat> Twisted Faith is quite strong. He's a very nice burst champion, and he... Um, he can rotate really well to other lanes. The only problem with Twisted Faith is sustained damage. You have no sustained damage with Twisted Faith at all. It's all burst and catching out an enemy with your stun. Yasuo is still really solid. Um, Aurelion, so even after his nerf, can be okay, but he's in the A tier. As you can see, there are so many better picks. Like, honestly, these are all good. And in the A tier and below, these are like the picks that are not good, you know? And as you can see, Ari, like, what the hell is Ari doing in the A tier? Isn't Ari S tier? No, guys, Ari is not S tier because 
Ari is a snowballing champion. If you don't snowball with Ari, it's going to be extremely hard to come back. And these champions above are going to make it impossible for her to snowball because they're just better than Ari. And all the other champions, Zed is out of meta right now. Gra Gragas, so the reason that Gragas is actually up in the A tier is because Gragas is good into it's good into Katarina. You know, Gragas is good into Katarina. You can punish Katarina when you play Gragas. Diana, not so good. And all these champions, you know, don't play B tier and below. So now we go into the Baron. And as you can see, we have four champions in the S plus tier. What? Four champions? Yes. Actually, four champions. So after playing a lot, a lot of these champions, I actually decided that they're all equally as good. Darius, Malphite, Camille, and Fiora. These four champions are S plus tier in the top in the Baron lane right now. It's just they are so strong. Every single one provides so much utility to the team. Darius, incredible team fight. This is solo queue, by the way, guys. If this was not solo queue, Darius would actually be in S tier. But this is solo queue. I forgot to mention it, right? Darius is in the S plus tier because in solo queue you could easily hard carry against 1v5, like genuine 1v5s. Malphite, of course, with his ultimate and all the new items makes him absolutely amazing in the new update. Actually, like I was kind of doubting to put him first or Darius, but I still put Darius first because Darius can hard carry better than Malphite. Camille and Fiora both do the same thing. They are really good at split pushing, but Fiora is really, really nice at 1v1s. And not, not as good in team fights. But Camille skills so well into the late game. Like Camille's ultimate is so nice. Camille's first ability shreds through shreds through tanks because it deals true damage. Like both of these champions are really, really, really strong. Like uh, they all are. After that, we got Akali in the S tier. Akali is like still like Akali is strong, guys. Akali is strong. And the reason that she's in S tier is because she should be able to win every lane. Akali should be able to win every lane. And that's pretty much the only reason she's in S tier. Of course, she's a solid pick. But the problem is she's not tanky. And not being tanky is, you know, like the Baron laner is supposed to be at least a little tanky. However, Akali cannot frontline anything. And on top of that, she even goes invisible. So, so she is not a frontline. So, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Like the enemy, the enemy can go through your composition if you, if you don't have a frontline. So when you pick Akali to a Baron lane, make sure you pick a tanky support or a tanky jungler. Otherwise, you're going to get destroyed. And here in the A tier, like Gragas, Gragas used to be S plus tier, but I don't think he's S plus tier anymore. It's just all these other champions are way stronger than him. Now, I was debating whether or not I should put him in S tier, and I will actually put him in S tier. Like, I, I, like he's either on top of the A tier or at the bottom of the S tier. That's why I was like hesitating a lot with him. Now I'm going to talk about a few champions here. By the way, this, this little thing over here, I don't know what it is. It looks like a turtle. This is Pantheon. The reason for that is because this tier list does not have Pantheon. So I just put him to substitute for Pantheon. I'm going to talk about Pantheon now, actually. Pantheon is in the A tier because he's a very, very solid Baron Link pick, actually. I don't see him a lot, but he's very solid, guys. He, he, he's actually a counter to Darius. Darius is obviously the most broken top laner in the game. He actually, Pantheon actually counters Darius because... You can out-trade Darius in uh, short trades. It's also very easy to dodge Darius' first ability when you play Pantheon. See, the thing about Pantheon is, like, as I said, first of all, he should do fine in the, in, in the laning phase. He's very strong in the early game. Secondly, his ultimate is very nice to rotate to dragons or gank lanes. Like, everything is good about Pantheon except one thing. Let me tell you what that one thing is. The one thing that's not good about Pantheon, which makes him A tier instead of S tier or S plus tier, is his late game. If you are unable to win the early game, you're going to be absolutely useless. Really, you are really going to be useless. Because if you're behind on items, you're going to do zero damage. You're going to provide like just a little utility to your team because you're going to be able to stun the enemy, of course, and things like that. But it's just he's trash if you fall behind. Now, Mundo has also climbed the ladder. Mundo is so good, guys. And in certain matchups, he can even be S plus tier. Mundo is obviously really good against magic damage. So if the enemy has a lot of magic damage, pick up Mundo, guys. You're going to be able to be the biggest tank in your team. And this new item, Sunfire Ages, is beautiful on Mundo. So that's the thing about Mundo. Nasus, on the other hand, why why does everyone hate Nasus? Like, come on, guys. Nasus is A tier. Nasus is so strong. And if you know how to play him, like, I have a million Nasus videos. Please go check them out. Check out a few of them. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me that a good Nasus player can hard carry a game. 
Every time I play Nasus, I get super ahead in the game because I know how to play him. The only problem of Nasus is early game, of course. You need to be able to stack up without dying. Th this is it, stack up without dying. If you do that, you're going to be destroying the enemy. And yes, this guy's singed. You know, as I said, if this video reaches 1,000 likes, I'll, I'll, I'll pick up Singed and learn him for a video. So if you want to see that, of course, give the video a like, right? Also, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I read through an article today, uh, today that mentioned that YouTubers should tell the viewers to subscribe because sometimes they forget. I never did it because I didn't like it, but I guess I'll do it now. We'll see how it works, right? <laughs> so here I also have Yasuo. Yasuo is in the A tier and he's actually in the B tier but I put him in the A tier because he can work well if you have good champions in your team. What do I mean with good champions? Champions that have mock-ups like Lee Sin, like Malphite, like Alistar. When you pick Yasuo top lane guys, make sure you have mock-ups in your team, okay? Make sure, otherwise he's useless. And what other champion should I mention? Cannon is out of meta, he's not good. Zed is like a low-key good pick in Barren lane because you can one-shot, you know, you, like you can rotate to the mid lane and one-shot the mid lane and go back. This is what I do on Zed, by the way. I also have a Barren lane Zed video. Make sure to check check that out if you're interested. Galio Barren lane, by the way, C tier. Now what the hell is this broken Galio champion doing in C tier? Let me tell you. It's true that Galio is like really, really good, but in the Barren lane, he's C tier. And the only reason for that is because all, like almost all his matchups are absolutely terrible in the Baron lane. Like if you, if as you can see, Malphite, Darius, Fiora, and Camille, they all destroy um, um, Galio. Actually, Malphite doesn't destroy him, but the other three absolutely destroy him. So I guess Malphite, you should be okay, but. It's like Gragas also like does really well into Nasus does really really well into Olaf does really well into Jarvan does you know they all do really well in the lane against Galio so that's why I don't recommend Galio in the Baron lane. On to the ADC tier list and as you can see, Kaisa is on the top and yes guys Kaisa is on top reason. Kaisa is always, always S tier. Every matchup, every combination, Kaisa works with every champion and she's S plus tier. Especially with the new new ways of building Kaisa. By the way, I have Kaisa videos too, you know. I, you can just look them up on my channel if you want to learn them. So and Kaisa is amazing. Especially if you're able to pick up the first power spike, which is either a blade of the wound king or like the, the items to get your first ability upgrade before the first dragon, you're gonna have a massive advantage because you, your Kai'Sa is gonna be way stronger than the enemy Jinx, Jin or whatever, you know, like when you have to upgrade, you're gonna be way stronger. Now in the S tier, we have Ezreal guys. Ezreal climbed my tier list all the way from the B tier to the S tier. And the reason for that is he's just like, he, he worked really, really well on this update with the Mana Mune, with Trinity Force. It's really, really nice champion. Also, with the attack speed nerfs, like Ezreal can just keep poking the enemy. And he, he's like a very, very solid pick. People are picking him up more now. And I suggest you to do it too. I'm, I'm, I'm practicing him as well, but I'm kind of having a hard time. I'll try to make a video on him soon. But Ezreal, guys, really, really strong pick in this patch. Jinx, like always, you know, Jinx is Jinx. I shouldn't really say much about Jinx. Jinx is just really really good you know jinx can always hard carry games zaya is also in the s tier because zaya got a massive buff last update which makes her quite good in the patch not broken but really really good and draven yes draven is also in the s tier i want to say if you are a one trick draven and actually really good at draven he's in the s plus tier like he's actually in the S plus tier if you are really good with him because he can snowball the game right if you're really really good at him and know how to trade with him and how to play aggressive with him, he is really, really strong. If you don't know how to play him, he is like B tier. So I put him in the S tier to, like, you know, in, in between. Like, if you are good at Draven, he's S tier. And he can really, really snowball games. And the thing is, he can also come back in games. Even if you get killed, all you gotta do is just farm and not get killed again. If you farm and then get a kill, you know, you'll still be able to make the comeback because you get so much gold because of his passive. And here we have Corky in the A tier. Corky is really, really good in the A tier because, you know, his laning is okay. 
and he's very especially good if the enemy has a tanky support because you're going to be able to shred through the front line you know so i suggest you to pick corky if the enemy either has alistar or braum support otherwise he's going to be a little harder to play because if you're against a janna for example janna is going to outpoke you she's just going to continuously damage you and you're going to get destroyed by janna misfortune i want to give you a quick tip on misfortune misfortune hard counters Draven, guys so if you didn't know that already if the enemy picks Draven. Big misfortune. The way that you have to play against Draven, shoot your first ability to poke him, he's never going to be able to come close to you. You know, that's just a quick little tip. So misfortune is also quite a solid pick in the ADC. It's just, she kind of falls off. If you don't win the early game hard, like, it, the enemy ADC is just going to do more damage than you. Like, compare misfortune with Kai'Sa or Ezreal or Jinx, you know, in the, like, if you, if you don't win with Jinx, it's okay. Like, you're still going to do a lot of damage in the late game. But if you don't win with Misfortune, you're going to struggle. You're going to do way little... Like, you're not going to do a lot of damage. And Jin... See, the thing about Jin is... His laning is good. His survivability is amazing. Amazing. Catching out an enemy, amazing. But the main thing that the ADC, that the ADC needs, which is sustained damage, is a thing that Jin does not have. And this is a problem, because... If your whole team is trash, you cannot hard carry with Jin. I mean, you can, of course, you can carry with every champion, but it's way harder than any other ADC. Like, all the ADCs in this list can hard carry more than Jin, except for Yasuo. Well, okay, yeah, they can hard carry more than... I'll talk about Yasuo later. They can hard carry more than Jin. Because Jin, like, how are you going to be able to kill five enemies with Jin, except for your ultimate? It's just really, really hard. So that's the only problem with Jin. So he's, like, solid. He's definitely solid. Um, but if your team is trash, you cannot carry it. Now, Ash, like, Ash is not that strong. But the thing about Ash is her ultimate is game-changing. If you are good with Ash, I, like, I would definitely say that one-trick Ash players would probably be on top of the A tier. Maybe S tier, maybe. Maybe. She, but she's just kind of weaker. So if you only play a few games of this and that, then Ash is going to be quite hard to carry the game with as well. Ash is like really weak in the early game and skills really well in the, into the late game. So what you got to do with Ash, play it safe, you know? So here I'm going to talk about them real quickly. Tristana, really bad early game, but if you can get to the late game, incredible. She can hard carry games. Vayne is only good into certain matchups. Vayne is good into tanks. And Yasuo, I put Yasuo here too. And actually on the C tier, again, pick Yasuo if your team has a lot of knockups. And if you pick him in the bot lane, I actually only suggest you to do it if your team has like three knockups. So let's say Malphite, Malphite Baron lane, Lee Sin jungle, and um, Alistar support and Galio mid lane actually, that's four knockups. If you, that's like the perfect composition to pick Yasuo ADC. Otherwise, never pick Yasuo ADC. Okay, on to the jungle tier list. Okay, so as you can see, Evelyn and Lee Sin are S plus tier. These two champions are just incredible. Evelyn, you know, early game is okay because of her first ability, she's able to trade evenly with a lot of junglers. And her ganking ability is the best out of all the junglers. It's just the best. And her late game is probably also the best. Because she can one-shot. The only problem of Evelyn is, if the enemies have a lot of guardian angels, then, you know, they have another life. But as I said, like, Evelyn is a one-shot champion. If you're able to snowball the game, you're going to win. If you lose the early game, what you got to do is just farm. And then you can still, you can still win the game. Because you can one-shot the enemy ADC or mid laner, for example. Now, Lee Sin is incredibly strong, incredibly strong in the early game. Like, in the early game, Lee Sin is the best. Maybe even S++ in the early game. So, what you got to do on Lee Sin is abuse that early game. Because when you get to the late game, he's weak. Like, late game, he's like, you know, weak, weak. He's not S++ tier anymore. The only reason he's in S++ tier is because you can play very aggressively with him. Gank lanes at level 2. You know, gank lanes while you're level two, and it's so easy to kill the enemies. Like you can, you can ult them back. You can just slow them with your third ability. You know, Lee Sin is very solid. And Doctor Mundo, what? Doctor Mundo on top of the S tier? Yes, Doctor Mundo is so incredibly strong with the new update because of all the new items, the Sunfire Ages. It's like, guys, you need to give Jungle Mundo a try. 
I shouldn't say, I'm not going to say too much about it, but you should do it. Maybe I will do it, actually. Yeah, maybe I'll pick up Jovin Mundo. Yeah, yeah, I, I will. I will. I'll buy Mundo at, maybe after Singed. You know, it depends. We'll see. So, yeah. Pick him up and go full tank. You'll be able to do a lot of damage anyways, because Dr. Mundo has a lot of base damage, and you're going to be unkillable. Shivana and uh, uh, Wukong are very solid picks as well. You know, Shivana, when you use your ultimate, becomes incredibly powerful. The only weakness of Shivana is when you waste your ultimate. So make sure you don't waste your ultimate on Shivana. Also, Shivana takes dragons incredibly fast. So when you, pick, when you have Shivana in your team, make sure you pay attention to dragons. Also, because dragons buff Shivana. Wukong is so strong in team fights. You know, they nerfed his ganking. Because you only become invisible for one second now because, uh, in his second ability. So, he, like, he, his ganking is still okay, but not amazing. But his team fighting, guys, so, so good. Because his ultimate is a game changer. If you can use a good ultimate twice, you can turn the fight around super hard. Okay, so here we have Amumu. And Amumu is actually on top of the A tier. And I almost put him in the S tier, but I didn't quite yet. Now, Amumu, guys, with the Sunfire Ages as well, like, this, the addition of Sunfire Ages made so many, like, made so many champions super good, like Malphite, Dr. Mundo, Amumu, Alistar, you know, like, this item makes Amumu so strong, it's literally the perfect item for him, and that's the only reason why he's in, a, in on top of the A tier. Of course, Amumu is nice because of his ult and his damage and blah, blah, blah. But um, he's on top of the A tier. Another reason why Amumu is actually on top of the A tier is because he deals true damage. And true damage goes right through tanks. And this is a tank meta right now, you know, a meta where tanks are good. So Amumu is good into that. Really, really good. Jarvan, Vi, you know, these champions are both very, very solid. Vi is really good at ganking. It's just a solid champion in the game. Jarvan is also really strong in the early game. His ultimate is good for catching enemies. He has good poking. Olaf, now let me talk about Olaf actually. Olaf is, I would say, bad. You might think, like, what the hell are you talking about? He's bad because they nerfed his armor and he, he gets shredded so fast. However, Olaf can still be S tier. When is he S tier? Let me tell you. Olaf is S tier if you can utilize his, his third ability and his ultimate really well into the enemy. Now, what do I mean with that? His third ability deals true damage and his ultimate negates a CC. So when Alistar uses ultimate, Olaf's third ability is actually going to shred right through it. It doesn't care about the damage reduction. When Braum uses his shield, third ability goes right through it. You know, when Galio uses his second ability, third ability goes right through it. So Olaf, uh, also his ultimate may negate CC, right? Olaf is an absolute hard counter to champions like Alistar, like Galio, like... Um, also really good into Darius, by the way, because, you know, to negate the slow and the blah, blah, blah. It's just really, really good into that. But it's bad into anything else. So that's, you know, that's why he's on the bottom of the A tier. So let's talk about this one, actually, the turtle, which is Pantheon. Pantheon, I'm sorry, guys, there's no Pantheon. So Pantheon Jungle has some strong things about it. Obviously, the early game is good. Secondly, ganking, really, really strong. You know, the second ability is really good for ganking. Also, Pantheon's ultimate is really, really good for ganking. But again, the problem is late game. If you're unable to capitalize on your early game, you're going to struggle in the late game. Now, the same goes for Lee Sin, of course. But the thing is, Lee Sin is so incredibly strong in the late game. Like, you know, you, you should be able to win early game. But Pantheon is just a little strong in the early game. So, you know... It's good, but it's not going to be as easy as Cindy Sin to snowball the game. Now, Darius Jungle. I want to talk about Darius Jungle too, because this is a thing that I do never see. I, I never see anyone talk about or anything. Darius Jungle is legit, guys. You can play Darius Jungle if you just need another fighter in your team. See, um, the ganking of Darius is not the best. However, if you go Ghost on Darius, you know, that's also one of the reasons why he's rising on my tier list. Um, if you go Ghost on Darius Jungle, you can get the bonus movement speed and gank. So if you get Ghost and Glorious Enchant, you know, both of these which give movement speed, you're going to be able to be incredibly fast when ganking. And if you do that, you can easily hook the enemy and slow them and kill them. That is the reason why he's on this tier list. Now, um, as you can see, also Camille, Yasuo, Diana, Zinshao, you know, these are okay, but don't really recommend them. And hmm, very surprisingly, there are more tiers. So we have EFG, there are more tiers. What the hell is coming up? And oh, yes, baby, we have the Yi tier. 
So again, this is to the Master Yi that I think it was two months ago entered my game 08. Okay, on to the next tier list. So we got support and um, the support tier list changed a little bit, uh, you know, compared to my, actually quite a lot. There's a lot of champions that changed. So let me talk about it. Alistar S plus tier. Nothing compares to Alistar, especially with the new items, guys. I'm working on a new Alistar video, guys. Like, I've had games where I dealt the most damage of my team. I'm not even kidding. So I'm working on Alistar, and the new Sunfire Aegis item is really, really nice on Alistar as well. I'm I kind of discovered a new build. I gave a lot of builds a try, and Alistar S plus here. I'll, I'll, I'll tell it to you later in the Alistar video. I'm not going to talk about it too much. But the reason that Alistar is S tier, of course, because of all the damage, you can tank super hard because of your ultimate. You have a lot of CC, your second and your third ability and your first ability, and you, you have the biggest turret diving potential. Now, Braum is S tier. So Braum is really, really strong, and Braum is actually good into Alistar because let me tell you why. When Alistar dives into your team, you can use your Braum shield in front of the enemy ADC, so like what you what your ADC can do is your ADC can damage the Alistar while you keep away the enemy ADC. And um, like Braum, also Braum's first ability and his passive, you know, it allows you to stun an enemy after hitting them for four times, which is really, really huge in laning. So Braum is really strong in the laning matchup. Also, Braum is good if the enemies have a lot of projectiles. Like if the enemy has a Ziggs, for example, Braum can block all the bombs of Ziggs. If the enemy has Ezreal, Braum can block it all, you know. Um, so Janna, the next one, is really, really good too. If you don't need a tank in your team, pick Janna, guys. Wow, wow, wow. Janna is so good. And you, like, I have a lot of Janna videos. You need to check them out. Like, the thing about Janna is um, she has bonus movement speed. And you really, like, you can utilize that to rotate to mid lane, top lane, jungle, to help them all out. And you're so fast. And that's what makes Janna super strong. Also, her second ability does so much damage. Her third ability is a shield. Every, she has everything. She even has a heal, like her ultimate. So, you know, she is really, really solid. And as you can see, we have another, we have a new champion entering the S tier, which is Nami. Now, I have a friend, Keys, who has really proven to me that Nami is S tier. Like, if you are good at Nami, if you really understand how she works, then she is so strong. She is so, so strong. And she is really, really good in the laning matchup. Like, um, you know, you can deal so much damage to the enemy while healing your ally. Her first ability can catch out enemies. Her third ability is a really, really nice knock-up and slow. You know, it's, it's a very solid champion. Very good in the laning matchup. And also very, very good in team fights. So after that, we have Rakan. Now, Rakan has also been quite an underrated support, and you should just give him a try. It, but the thing is about Rakan, I think you kind of need to one-trick him, because he's not easy to play. If you get really, really good with using his abilities, then he's he's likely going to be S-tier. So Rakan, you know, underrated. Definitely give him a try. Galio, the new champion. I don't like him a lot on support. Like, you know, going for full tank Galio, I don't like it. It's just... I really, really don't like it. It doesn't really fit his kit too well. It just makes you tanky, but it's still okay because Galio is really, really strong. So here we have Seraphim, Sona. You know, these champions are both really good because, you know, they, they both kind of have the same thing. You can heal your ally. You can deal damage to the enemy in lane. Both kind of the same. Now, I want to talk about Leona. Leona is a new champion, and I think Leona is quite a solid pick, but she's not easy to play. You really need to be able to do good Leona combinations, and you really need to be under. You really need to understand when you can dive in, when you cannot on Leona. The thing about Leona is she has huge CC. Her ultimate, her first ability, her third ability, all are stuns and roots. So if you can utilize those well, she is really, really strong. And I want to talk about Lux too. Actually, I put Lux in the B tier. Now, if you are good with hitting the Lux abilities, she can be really good especially with champions like Draven or Ezreal, you know. Ezreal and Lux is a beautiful combination because it's a lot of poking. These two can poke so much. Like, they, if you have Ezreal and Lux, you need to be able to destroy the enemy lane. Also, Draven and Lux, you know. So, keep that in mind. Um, did I actually put Annie in the mid lane? Or did I forget Annie again? Oh, she's here. Okay, nice. So, that was it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, I will see you all. It's like another 30 minute video. Like, can I can I not upload short videos really? Is it not possible? <laughs> but yeah, I will see you all 
in the next Wild Earth video. Bye-bye.